The Ascent, brought to you by Crestmont Private Wealth, recorded at Bernie Radio. Before we get started, I'm going to read a little bit of legalese. The opinions expressed are mine only. The material and discussion is for informational purposes only. It does not constitute investment advice and is not intended as an endorsement for any specific investment. Okay, so with that, we are going to talk a little bit about risk management today. And this is a great topic for all you worriers out there. What do we mean in a wealth management context as we talk about risk management? Well, risk management means a lot of things to a lot of people. But today, we're going to talk really about the insurance side of risk management. Now, let me repeat what I said at the beginning. We are not marketing any products, any companies. There's no specific strategy today we're going to talk about that you should take action on. Very, very, very important that we just kind of lay the groundwork for risk management best practices. All right, so let's talk about it in the context of the financial life cycle. Here at The Ascent, we talk about the trailhead. You're just getting started in your financial journey. The Ascent, middle-aged, you know, that's when you're making a good amount of money and it's going out the door in a similar cubic feet per second kind of way. And then the summit, that's where you've reached the number for you to live off of the rest of your life, ideally, and you retire. So during all three phases, you really have different types of risk management, you know, different types of insurance that you would need. So when you're younger, I'd say that probably life insurance and some of you out there that are younger may not have it. And it's a really interesting topic because what we find at Crestmont is typically people get life insurance either through their employer as part of their benefits, which is a great place to get it, or they go out and they get a policy and typically they get it after they get married when that newborn is on the way. That's not necessarily the right time to do it. And part of the reason for that, and we're talking about life insurance here, is because life insurance is a function of replacing income. And if you think about it, if you plan on having children or you don't plan on having children, if you have a risk, if you have a worry or a concern or a potential financial loss for a loved one, if you were to die, well you probably ought to be looking at life insurance. And the reason why you should look at that is for protecting others, okay? It's risk management. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody needs life insurance. And guys, I've seen it. There's the, you know, back in the day in the 70s and the 80s, the guy that walks into your office uh, at work and he's got the tie and the cheesy sports coat and the big old briefcase and he's here to sell you some insurance, all right? Well, things have changed, okay? The whole industry is pretty wide open, open architecture. There's tons of carriers out there. It's about finding the right policy for you for your financial plan. And that's really, really, really important if you even need life insurance. But life insurance is something that you ought to consider if you need it for different reasons. When you're younger, to replace income. When you're older, potentially to solve for an estate tax problem. Now, we're not going to get too deep into that today in the show, but you can actually use life insurance to solve for some of the expected estate tax in the future if you're above the exemption levels. Life insurance. One of the things that we find out from people is that they delay it thinking, you know, I'll just get it when I need it. Well, unfortunately, what they may not realize is they could come down with some sort of obscure illness or some sort of obscure injury that may cause them to get declined in the future. And guys, there's just so many things out there that uh, unfortunately can disqualify you from being approved with a carrier. And so what we do at Crestmont is we do something called an informal inquiry, which is essentially like filling out a questionnaire confidentially for your general agent where they can go and have kind of like a, imagine like a report card on your health, like what medications you're taking, you know, what your blood pressure is, some basic questions, and then go to a general agent, a case manager that can look at all the various carriers out there and go, okay, which one are you most likely to qualify for, even if you need insurance? So that's one way to kind of go about it. If you're needing life insurance is to go through what's called an informal inquiry. Okay, so we talked about life insurance there, and that's a topic that people avoid 
a lot of times until they absolutely need it because we all think we're not going to die. And that's unfortunate, but we do. That's one thing that's guaranteed in life. We're eventually going to die. While it's not everybody's favorite topic, it is something that we take great pride in at Crestmont Private Wealth and helping people sort through whether they even need it or not. And then going and finding the right carriers for them and the right amounts. As you get older, as you get through the trailhead to the ascent and then to the summit, there's a possibility that you don't even need life insurance anymore. You can now self-insure. Maybe some of you listening out there are still paying on a life insurance policy and you're not even sure why you're doing it because you did it 20 years ago and you still have it. It's become a habit. Well, if you need that reviewed, give us a call. Send us an email. We'd be happy to have a confidential meeting with you and Look at it and see how it fits now. It may not. Info at CrestmontPW.com or One River Way in Houston, 604 South Main in Bernie is where we can be found. And our web address is www.CrestmontPW.com. What are we talking about today? We're talking about risk management from a financial perspective. And we just talked about life insurance. All right. So the next thing that's up is a really, it's a tough topic, but I think it's something that listeners like you, whether you're younger middle-aged or older, have probably been impacted one way or another at some point. And it's the concept of long-term care. So what is long-term care? Long-term care essentially means that you cannot perform a certain number of the daily activities of life. So think about it. Think if you could not feed yourself, you could not cook, you could not go to the restroom or shower on your own or put on clothes. Guys, that's reality. As we get older, people have those long-term care events. As we get older, that's something that can be a big financial risk to our family, to our loved ones, to our own portfolio. Long-term care has become a regular part of discussions with our client base because of the risk associated with it, not only from a financial perspective in terms of the sheer cost of in-home health care or needing a nurse's aid or going into a long-term care facility, a lot of people don't realize that Medicare doesn't really pay much of this. I mean, it's really just a very short window and then you're kind of on your own. So you either self-insure that risk or you pre-plan for that risk. And depending on your financial situation, it may be that you can self-insure that risk. You may have enough capital to be able to take care of that. But if you don't, it may be something you may need to consider looking at providing some risk management on that. Now, the cool thing is that this part of the industry in insurance, in risk management, on long-term care has evolved a lot. So it used to be that you paid for a, a policy and it was a use it or lose it. Kind of like homeowner's insurance where you you pay in every year and it's pretty expensive and you know whether you use it or not it's there but if you quit paying it it's not there or if you die all the money goes away well in response to that they came out with hybrid products things that were really uh, or insurance rather that was on a life insurance chassis meaning that you could provide some sort of permanent cash value on a policy that would have a long-term care rider associated with it. Meaning that if you pay into it, there is a option to be able to get your money back at some point in the future if you surrender the policy, or if you kept it in place, you end up compounding the benefit of that long-term care rider. And the, the neat thing about some of these policies out there is that they're called indemnity policies, meaning that the insurance carrier just needs a doctor's letter as well as receipts in order to get reimbursement from the policy for a nurse's aid or in-home health care. The next piece of risk management that we talk about is disability. Now, for some of you, that is something that can be covered at work. And maybe your employer has a disability insurance policy as an option through your payroll. And if you do, you really ought to consider it because it's actually more likely that you become prematurely disabled than prematurely die. So the risk is actually pretty big that you get disabled. If you think about disability and you think about your occupation, it can be devastating to your income. If you're a doctor, as an example, if you're a surgeon and for some reason you injure yourself, you know, your hands, well, you're probably not going to be qualified to perform surgery anymore. Does it mean you can't go become a hospital administrator? Well, 
No, you probably could. But disability is something that should really be looked at in terms of your individual unique situation and if you need it or don't need it. At Crestmont Private Wealth, we view insurance and risk management as an essential review component of a financial plan. It doesn't mean you necessarily need it. It does not necessarily mean that you do. Reviewing it every so often to understand your risk factors, understand your situation, and see if you do or don't need certain risk mitigations financially in your life does make sense. That's being self-aware. It's being aware of your situation and ways that you can leverage available options out there to protect your loved ones, yourself, and others that you care about. At Crestmont Private Wealth, we do talk about insurance, but only in the context of a financial plan with a fully onboarded client. And so those of you that may have questions about insurance and really need a wealth management partner, we would love to hear from you. We can be reached at info at CrestmontPW.com. Again, insurance is a component of a financial plan, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you need it. But if you think about it, if there are certain situations like even flood insurance, let's say you live in a flood prone area, goodness gracious, you ought to consider flood insurance. The cost of that relative to the cost of the asset of the home, absolute no brainer. So when we talk about insurance and risk management at Crestmont Private Wealth, if it's something we don't handle, it doesn't mean we ignore it. You know, we talk about flood insurance. We talk about umbrella policies. We talk about e director liability, all the things that relate to your life. We want to be sure that you're protected, whether we can help you with it or someone else helps you with it. Really important because even one of the best financial plans and the largest portfolios out there can be decimated by having a known risk not covered. This is Sam McGee with The Ascent, brought to you by Crestmont Private Wealth. We hope this has been interesting to you, listeners. And if this is something that you would like to hear more about, you can find us on the web at www.crestmontpw.com. We are also in Bernie at 604 South Main and in Houston at One Riverway. We have a team of fiduciary professionals that help people on their financial journey. I hope you've enjoyed the show today, and God bless.